The numbers are in. <laughs> Uh, Michael, what are we doing tonight? Yeah, on this really <laughs> cold night. Cold seems to be a theme lately that we've got going here. Yeah, I feel like one of our word of the days should be cold. Yeah, well, what we're doing tonight is carrying on from our 10,000 subscriber giveaway video that we released, I think, a couple of weeks ago now, where we asked you guys what questions do you want to know, or what answers do you want to know. We're going to answer those questions tonight, and uh, we figured what we should probably do, do something we haven't done in a long time, and that is to go get a kebab. And the good news is, we have the perfect kebab tray to go do so at the minute, which is this. It's working! So being that we came here in the HQ, we probably mentioned that. So I'd driven it a couple of days before Nathan got a chance to try it. So yesterday was it? Yeah, yesterday. We thought it's about time Nathan gets to see how it goes and see what he thinks. So we should probably cut to that. It's just like, it's not like a big pull, but it just kind of kept pulling, didn't yeah, it? Yeah. Holy sh Oh my god. <laughs> oh. Don't get me wrong, this is still a slow it's car. Slow, but it's but awesome. it is the most fun you'll ever have in a slow oh, car. It's so loud. <laughs> That's right, it is finally working. I finally managed to get my hands on a second Holly Sniper. VPW still couldn't get one in the country because they're that much in demand at the minute and that they still don't know when they're coming in from the States. I managed to track another one down in Australia that was already here, which I bought through another company, which is Engine Masters Australia in New South Wales. They shipped it down to me. I then just basically took the throttle body and put the new throttle body on, as you can see, and basically it started. But I should say, when I did reinstall this, what I did do is I contacted a fellow by the name of Mick LePayne. He is a bit of a Holly Sniper expert here in Australia and I got onto him through Holly Sniper forums. He's been playing with them for basically since the day they came out and knows him inside and out. So I asked if he could come down and give me a hand to make sure that if I'm going to put another throttle body onto this system, how I got everything 100% right, is there anything going to need to change and what are his thoughts. And I just realised we were driving around all yesterday with that sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> <We're large. laughs> and that's our specialty tool too. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so he came along, he okayed it, said everything looks fine, everything should work. We put it in, hooked it all up, turned the key, and it ran. He then gave it a little bit of a tune. It is a self-learning um, component and it will learn and tune itself as it goes. But basically all he does is help it along the process and just make it as effective as it possibly can be, just with a few little tweaks here and there. And he did an incredible job, it works amazing. I've been driving this now for probably about a week, fair bit actually, and so far it's been unreal. It's doing exactly what it should do, it's learning, so the more I drive it, the more the map is learning, the better it's actually getting at driving. The cold starts are amazing, no more choke, no more flooding, none of that, it's just turnkey, it starts. The only thing that I did have to change in it, when we first installed it, we installed it standard. And what we found was, being as the full barrel carby, when you go take off, all four barrels open, and it was basically, the throttle became like an on-off switch. It was either nothing, move the pedal about a millimetre, and all of a sudden you had all four, it was just like full throttle, and it was just undrivable. I, I couldn't drive it, it was too jerky off the line. <laughs> so I spoke to Mick, he said a lot of manual guys that have run the Holy Snipers, they put a progressive uh, linkage on it. It means that the secondaries are only open when the primaries are at 40% throttle. And the way that it does that is it has this little linkage here. Primaries are open, 
Only now the secondary start to open. So what that basically means is that the sniper works as like a quadrajet does now. So the secondaries come in delayed. It fixed the problem, it made a, com a completely different car be out of it. Sorry, TBI. <laughs> it takes off smoothly now, it's gentle on the throttle, and then when you want to get up and go, you put your foot down and you actually feel and hear those secondaries come in just like a quadrajet. We will do a more in-depth video on this in the future, but I don't really want to do it right now only because it is so new. I've only been running for a week now. And the snipers, people that have really good reliability with them, or they don't. So I'm sort of waiting to see how it turns out for me. So I'm gonna maybe give it a month or so before we do a full review in this to find out whether it's actually, we think it's worthwhile. Initial thoughts are, it's pretty damn good. But we'll see what happens in a month and we'll do a full review on it. We just wanna give you a brief update because that is one of the many questions that we got asked by you guys, <laughs> by a whole bunch of people. What's been happening with the Sniper HQ? Sounds, sounds deadly. <laughs> it does. Well, we're back from our kebab and we've walked into this absolute mess of a place. <laughs> We've been so lazy with putting stuff away purely because it's a constant repetition of getting tools out, putting them back away, getting everything out again, putting it back away, getting everything back out. So we just left it. Yeah. <laughs> but now that both cars are done and they're working to a point. <laughs> We can finally give this place a good clean. I think we're mainly going to focus on the ER tonight because um, it's cold and it's getting late. But we are going to clean and answer some questions at the same time. Yes. So I'm going to put a hammer and a screwdriver away. <laughs> you know what the worst bit is? As messy as this is, the back shed. We're not going to even look at that tonight. <laughs> it's even worse. <laughs> All right, Nathan, first question. Pivot has asked, what are our day jobs? Well, I am a sign writer. So I make signs and put signs up and make LED letters and wrap cars. That's what I do every day. Me, I am a firefighter. I put the wet stuff on the hot stuff. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> I, I don't know whether there's people out there that might think that we are mechanics, because how could you think we're mechanics? <laughs> Look at all the things we get wrong. Uh, but no, we're definitely not mechanics or anything like that. We're just, yeah, learning as we go, I suppose. Nathan, second question from yeah. Shannon Brooks. His question is, what tools are we going to take the drag challenge with us? Ah, uh, okay. Um... All right, get the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> this was the whole thing. <laughs> Call the stuff. Socket set. Socket set. Spanners. Spanners. Hammer. Big hammer. Pogo stick. Oh, the pogo stick has to come. Um, I feel like it, like everything. Yeah, some Maybe lighting. three 13 mil sockets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> It's hard to describe what we're going to take, but a lot of stuff. Um, jack stands, jack. I reckon we'll probably need a bunch of electrical stuff as well too, just to make sure, because <laughs> we did the hell tech. <laughs> I'm sure that something will come up. Starter motor, probably take that. Lights, gloves, rags, oils. Oils. I think that's it basically. I mean, it's, it's sort of like you don't want to carry too much, but you need to carry the essentials. Yeah, but like the essentials can get you out of a lot of stuff. Yeah. It's just going to be more painful because ratchet spanners. Ratchet spanners. It's just going to be more painful because you've got to do it by hand. Yeah. But I feel like, you know, ratchet spanners, spanners, sock set, that's basically everything you really need, eh? Michelle. Yes. I have another question. Mm hmm. Uh, from Dan Kempster. When will we see a Valiant in the workshop? A Valiant? I would love to do a Valiant. In all honesty, a Valiant Charger is one of my dream cars. I'd love <laughs> yeah. to do one of them. I like uh, I like the AP5. They're tough. Yeah, they yeah. are cool. Love to do one, maybe one day. I would never say no. Look, to be honest, I'll never say no to any car. Yeah, no. <laughs> We're not biased by any means. It's so bad. Anyone want a intake pipe for their Falcon? <laughs> <laughs> that induction noise though. <laughs> this was the intercooler piping before. This is what we're going to. It's a lot bigger. Deeper. 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 Yeah. <laughs> From Carl Phillips. What is the name of the paint color on your HQ? He wants to paint it like yours. Ah, oh, the HQ. Ah, uh, that is actually, this is a bit of sacrilege for all you holding guys out there, <laughs> but it's actually Ford Toxic off the BF XR6, I think they came off. Yeah, it's Ford Toxic. It's sort of in between of Barbados and Jamaica. Jamaican Lime, I think it is. I painted it that color when that color just came out on the Falcons. And no one's ever really, no one's picked it. Everyone has, to this day has thought it's a Holden color. And I'm just like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a Holden color. <laughs> All right, Nathan, this one's, I reckon this one's gotta be for you. Yeah. Brock Grimer asks, 
Do you guys have any future plans on working on VL Commodores or other Monaros? Oh, ho, ho, VL Commodore. I'd love to do a VL. The RB30 just seems like such a good engine if it wasn't for the crank angle sensor constantly going on them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I'd love to do a VL. So a question that we've actually been asked by a few people now is about filming. A lot of people have been asking what camera do we actually use? So the camera that we use is a Sony A6500. So it's a mid-range digital camera, but it works really well for what we're doing. It's really easy to use. Yep. Both Nathan and I don't have any expertise or anything when it comes to cameras or anything like that. It's all stuff that we've just been learning on the go and a few people have helped us out along the way. Big thanks to Matt for helping us out with some advice when we started this channel. We use a shotgun microphone, which you can get relatively cheap and well worth it. How long ago now? Probably the start of the year, we invested in... A gimbal. In a gimbal. And we got a, a <laughs> Ronin SC, and it was probably the best thing that we did for the channel because there was no more shaky cam anymore. Give us a demonstration of how the gimbal works. You can see how it stays flat and stable. That's basically the idea of a gimbal, and it just takes away the shakiness when you're holding it and Nathan can control it by a little joystick on the back there. You're probably looking at about three and a half thousand dollars worth of hardware there in camera gear, sports I reckon. Sports mode. <laughs> Nathan loves the sports mode. <laughs> so if you are looking at starting a YouTube channel, I would highly recommend getting the gimbal. It is definitely worthwhile and it definitely changed the game for us. As far as what else we film with, our kit bag has sort of grown over the time that we've had the YouTube channel going. I can't say years, it hasn't been years yet. <laughs> But this is our kit bag, basically. We have a bunch of batteries, because you need all the batteries you can get when you're filming all day long. We have a tripod, another shotgun mic. This is for GoPros. We run two GoPros, a Black Hero 8, and one is a Black Hero 7. And we just have a bunch of different suction cup mounts and stuff like that. It's all pretty basic stuff that we've just been collecting as you go. Uh, another question that we've been asked a lot too when it comes to editing, what programs do we use? I do all the editing myself and I use Adobe Premiere Pro and that's basically edit the whole videos and the special effects that you see that you would probably see here if I wanted to say put my name or something else like that or if I wanted to put something there, that's all done through uh, Adobe After Effects. And again, something that before I started the channel, I had no idea how to use. It was all just literally as we were releasing the videos and as I was editing them, I was watching YouTube channels on how to actually do it and just learn from that. Another question that we get asked a fair bit is how long does each episode take to produce? Yeah, probably six, seven hours is probably a film. It's probably to film the content, which is usually a day's work for us in the shed. To actually edit it, it takes a little bit longer. Every episode will take anywhere from 15 to 20 hours to edit to get probably a 25 minute episode out. I have a good one. <laughs> have you considered doing an episode based on your subs rides? We do want to start getting reviews. You will start to see reviews coming to the channel in the near future. We actually want to start looking at other people's sheds too. So if you've got a really wicked shed, send us in uh, photos or videos or something of a walk around in your shed and uh, we'll check them out and then maybe we'll come down one day and we'll film it. All right, Ish. I have your question. My question. Yep, this is for you. Dave Hughes. I don't know if it is that the Dave Hughes, but <laughs> Dave Hughes asks, what is both of our dream rides if money was no object? Oh, that's a tough one. That's a real tough like, one. Like, if money was no object, my dream ride though, like, like what I've always wanted. Actually, no, I want you to try and guess it, Michael. What, what you've what, always what, wanted? Yeah, what, what have I always wanted? That's tough. I don't know what you've always wanted. Um, is it Ford? Not a Ford. No. I've got my dream car. So my dream car when I was a kid was an XE Falcon. Like, it's literally what I wanted. And that was what my dad said, you go buy one and you have it for the rest of your life. So I got it. But my second car would have to be a HG Premier Station Wagon. <laughs> Michael's just, just clicked because he yeah. knows I love HGs. Yeah. HG Premier Station Wagon, white roof over red body with all the chrome trims, the 14 inch wheels and the hubcaps and the white walls, but with a tunnel ramp big block that is just <laughs> torque, <laughs> torque monster. It just, it has to have twin carbs out the bonnet. It has to have just monster, monster torque. Just munch the tires at 110. That's it. <laughs> That's, that would be my dream build, a HG Prem wagon. For me, my dream build, it's gonna be pretty basic, I reckon, but I would probably say it'd be a HQ coupe. I know I've got the I HQ. I knew you were gonna say yeah. HQ coupe. I know, I know, I've already got the HQ sedan, 
But the car that got me into cars was because of my old man. Back in the day, he had a HQ Monaro, which was pretty well worked and pretty crazy. And it was a HQ Coupe. And I just fell in love with that car. And ever since then, I just had to get a HQ. Um, obviously, I wanted a Coupe when I was younger, but I obviously couldn't afford it even back then. Although it would have been a bargain now, 10 <laughs> years ago. Um, I could never afford one, so I obviously got, I went with a sedan. But there's just something about a coupe. If I could get my hands on a coupe one day, that would be my dream build. Would I go crazy like Nathan? No, I'd probably go just about stock standard. 350 Chev, maybe a 5-speed in it. Standard looking, standard wheels. Probably dropped. I'd probably drop it. Nothing crazy like that, but yeah, HQ coupe. But uh, unfortunately... I don't see it in the cars. They just, they keep going up. You can really see where our heart is, isn't it? It's still in old steel shitters. Yeah. <laughs> if money was no object, I'm gonna build a, Hol a Holden. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Another car that I would really love, and it's gonna sound like I'm a Holden fanatic, I'm not, but I would love a mint condition original HQ Caprice. Oh yeah, yeah. oh, oh. That, <laughs> that is a car that I would love to drive around in. Yeah. I reckon they just look so cool. Uh, just There's nothing else like them, I reckon. All right, this one is following up a daily job question, which we've covered, but how many hours a week do you get to spend working away in the shed? <laughs> it used to be a lot more before we started the YouTube channel, believe it or not. <laughs> Probably, what would you say? Well, really, the only time that we spend in the shed now is when we're filming, which is on the weekends. But lately we've been doing two eight hour days, like longer. Yeah, so we try and at least get one eight hour day a weekend to film. And to some weeknights too. And some weeknights as well too. Time in the shed now where we're not filming or doing other stuff, there isn't a lot of that anymore because when we're not filming and we're not working on the cars that you guys see here, we've got partners and family and friends that we need to visit and work obviously as well too. It all takes time. So in my days of spending time out in the shed, just fiddling away are few and far between now, to be honest. That's the funny reality of it, to be honest. <laughs> this is a question that I read when the comments first started rolling in and it comes from Sergeant Teddy. Such Teddy. Teddy. <laughs> the question is, what is the most useless tool, in both of our opinions, that is actually really expensive? We've actually thought about this one for a long time, yeah. and we don't know. We're going to take it as tools that we own. It's a really great, great question. It really is. It's freaking awesome. I can tell you what is expensive, and but is really worthwhile. The welder, the hoist, the drop saw, the tap set. <laughs> There's heaps of good gear in here, but I don't know if this stuff really... So this is our specialty cabinet, where all our specialty tools live. It's currently getting a little full. <laughs> <laughs> so we probably need to extend the specialty tool cabinet. I'll say one thing that I did buy, and this is not really automotive related, but I bought it when I was doing a lot of fabricating, like building all the stuff for the shed. And it is this, the drill doctor, which is like a drill bit sharpener. You know how, people know how pedantic I am with my drill bits. I'm not real great at sharpening a drill bit and I thought, I read into these and they're supposed to be really good. Tried it, don't like it. They're not ex they're not cheap, I think it was like 200 bucks. And I'm really not that thrilled on it. I reckon it was probably more of a gimmick than anything else. But, I could be wrong. Maybe I'm using it wrong, which is probably highly likely. And they're actually really good, but I just hadn't had, haven't had any success with it. So, it's just sitting here collecting dust, really. Great question. That's a really good question and it kept us thinking pretty much all week. I think that I'd have to say that anything that we have bought, especially if it's a significant purchase, monetary, like if it's worth a bit of money, we don't take it lightly. So we think about, are we actually going to use it? Could we borrow it from someone else's? Because at the end of the day, we're buying tools just like anybody else and everyone knows how expensive that can be. I mean, when we started this, this, sh this cabinet here was nearly empty and now we have just boxes and boxes of specialty tools. And they're amazing to have and they definitely make the job so much easier. The right tools just makes things so much better. But we really don't buy much unless we really need it, I suppose. What were your first cars and any cars that you've owned and that got away? Uh, it was a VS Statesman. Was it? That was handed down to me. Yeah, to right. To use on my P's. But first first car I had was technically a ZL Fairlane. Got given to me. <laughs> Really? Yeah, ZL Fairlane got given to me by my dad's old boss. Yeah. He had it. 
and the car had like 600,000 kilometers on it and it was sunburnt to like crazy but we went in every Sunday cleaned it up and then I ended up selling it for 300 bucks <laughs> and then that $300 was what bought my XE yeah right so technically my XE is my first car that I bought and then I got the V and then I had the VS Statesman which I didn't have for long because I hated it and then I bought Fairlane <laughs> <laughs> any cars that have gotten away then that you regret selling Nah. You're like me, you don't sell. No, I don't sell. <laughs> Just like my patrol, I'll never sell that. My first car, the HQ. My HQ is my first car. Was, I've had it before I even had my learners. The first car that I ever drove on my learners or anything was the HQ, but also my daily was a little Mazda 626 Eclipse. Top of the range. And I bloody loved that car. That was a great car. It went everywhere. You, re you remember it? Yeah, I remember pushing it home. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Do you remember it broke down on you? Yeah. And we pushed it home. Yeah. And I remember I had a sub in the back. Kept cool. blowing out mufflers. Kept blowing out mufflers constantly. <laughs> yeah, that was a good car. I like that car. Car that got away? Oh, come on. What You know what it is. What yeah. do you reckon it is? It's the Maverick. Yeah. <laughs> so before this Maverick that I have now, I had a, I'll, I'll say it, probably one of the cleanest Mavericks or GQ patrols in Victoria, maybe even Australia, I reckon. Uh, it was already clean when I bought it. It was full on ground pass spec and I made it even cleaner. I went through the whole lot, fixed it all up. It had TD42 in it, which I completely rebuilt. Bolted a turbo onto it. It was a beautiful four wheel drive. And I ended up selling it because I hated four wheel driving it and using it for what I built it for because I was so pedantic about being scratched and dented that I thought, I can't do this anymore. I'm just gonna sell it and buy a shitter. So I did and I regret that every day. <laughs> Here's a good question. How many cars do we have? I got the Fairlane, I got the XE. I got the patrol, and then I have a work car. You only got three cars, I feel like you've got more. Nah, that's all. I wish I had more. What would my fourth car be? I feel like I need to get a hold of them. HG's too HG, much. HG, work station I can't, wagon. I can't build my dream HG. Who's got a HG station wagon <laughs> that we can get? I just sold a car, actually. <laughs> so I'm down one. So I have, as you know, I have the HQ Monaro, I have the Sandman, I have my Maverick, I have a VFSS, and then I also have a BF Ute as a daily runaround, which is probably my favorite car. I love my BFU. <laughs> uh, I also have a Holden Gemini wagon as well too, which we, had no, we haven't shown on the channel yet. We're still trying to figure out what we're gonna do with it. Still thinking diesel swap, I reckon, in a minute. So yeah, six cars. The Gemini isn't registered though. That's just sitting there waiting. I just sold a car. I just sold an XHU. Me and Nathan share one thing in common. We don't like selling cars. <laughs> we buy cars, but we don't like to part with them. So we have a little, yeah, we have a fair few. Luckily, they're not all here all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Lucky two are running now. Yeah. Because usually we're pushing a lot of cars. <laughs> Someone is asking, how much power can a stock SRHC take when boosted? You'll find out in a few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> For anyone that doesn't know yeah. what the go is with this car, is it looks good, but it's still a completely stock bottom end. <laughs> It's still completely stock pistons, completely stock rods, just being rebuilt. And it's got a cam and valve springs. That's it. Yeah. That is it. <laughs> so if you're gauging on how much boost you want to put through your engine, that is a good gauge. Because <laughs> yeah. we're going to page up. Well, I'm willing to go to about 12, 14 PSI, right? And I've been told to not go there. But we're going to do it anyway. <laughs> so if you, want to, if you want to find out, you will see that soon. Because it's so close. It is a finished car again. Yeah. And it will be there on the dyno in about a week, two weeks time. Yeah. Just keep an eye out. Stay tuned. Subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> can you tell us how the LSQ is coming along? Oh, I can. Oh, it's so close. We can sniff it. So <laughs> it's actually going to engineering next week. It's going for a first inspection where they look over the car, uh, pick up any things that we might need to fix or change. Uh, I can say who is doing it, Jaber Engineering. But yes. The HQ should be back up here very shortly and we'll go over it, what it needed for engineering, we can show you and how we dealt with uh, Jaber Engineering. Mini truck build in the future? Oh my God, yes. I've been telling Michael, I wanna do a Hilux or something so bad. I feel like it's a really fun job to like get your hands dirty on some metal, you know what I mean? Like, and putting a notch kit into the back of a Hilux or something. But man, I would love to do a mini truck. You got no idea. What's our next big project? What is our next big project? Who knows, really? All we're focusing on at the minute is getting that thing to drag challenge. <laughs> Probably the Sandman. 
I reckon it's probably going to be the next big project finishing that off, I reckon. Cause... Not the XY Falcon that's sitting there? The XY Falcon is a long-term <laughs> project. For anyone who's asking where the XY Falcon is as well too, it is basically just being built in our spare time among working out our other cars uh, and also when the owner can get us parts and stuff like that because that is actually quite an expensive project to do and he's doing it on a budget still. So as he can provide the parts, we'll start putting them on. And as we the time, we'll start putting it on as well too. It's not something that we're rushing. It's just something in the background that we're working on. So when are we going to see it next? No idea. Could be maybe a month, I reckon, before we see some more parts when we get a gearbox, I reckon. And then yeah, we I reckon. Put it in the engine. Yeah. That's when we might see it next. Yeah. One question that we've had is, how did we start out working on cars? I was always in the garage with Dad. Yep. And had a million cars come through it as well but yeah no nah, with dad always with dad in the garage yeah for sure my answer would be much the same as nathan it started out with just working in the garage with my dad and learning from him and just messing around with cars and having a crack basically the question that i did read i can't remember who sent it but I, I i read it was you know why do we start the youtube channel how do we start the youtube channel and what were we expecting it to be why did we start the youtube channel i don't know i said to you i want to do drag chat drag weekend yeah, Drake's so on the weekend. Let's, let's rebuild the engine on the Fairlane, and then you said, hey, let's film it. Yeah. And that was it. <laughs> so, Hack Shop Garage, the, the YouTube channel sort of came to be because when I first moved to this house here, the property that we're on now, uh, I needed to build a shed, and I was looking at other people's Instagrams and stuff like that for inspiration on building a shed. So I thought, hey, maybe I will document how I went about building a shed. So if you look at the Hack Shop Instagram, and you scroll all the way back to the beginning, it actually sort of documents the process of how the shed got built and things that I did and come up against whilst doing it, just because I thought maybe someone else might find it interesting. So I was running that Instagram for a little while before Nathan came along and said, I want to build a car for Drag Challenge Weekend. And I said, yeah, cool, we can do that. And I thought, hey, why don't we film it and put it on YouTube just for kicks? We'll make like six minute episodes or something like that. <laughs> And if someone watches, great. If no one watches, well, then it's fine. And then it just escalated from there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a year later, we've now hit 10,000 subscribers. We have sponsors. We have multiple cars on the go. We have a fair lane now that is becoming much more of a drag car than a street car. And we're heading to drag challenge the week. Still not having ever dragged a car in our life or experienced <laughs> anything like it. The episodes got longer, the hours that we put into the channel got longer and we fell in love with it, I guess. We just, we've enjoyed the process. We've enjoyed bringing the content to you guys and seeing you guys appreciate what we're doing. And as many questions as there was in the comments from the last episode, there was twice as many really positive comments that are really heartwarming to sort of read guys saying that they love watching what we do and that they get a kick out of it. They're watching it with their kids, they're watching it with their wives they're, and the family and stuff like that and getting around cars. People saying that they watched out, watched the channel and they went and bought themselves a HQ or a <laughs> Haltech or something like that to put it in and then are just having a crack. And like I said in the episode before this, that is what Hackshop is all about. It is all about just having a crack. It's not about having all the answers and it's not about always getting it right. Sometimes the best learning experiences are getting it wrong and then trying to fix it after that. And we get it wrong all the time so as I always say, they're not failures, they're just unplanned learning experiences. And we've learned a lot from them in this time. So yeah, that's a long-winded answer of why this all began and how it got to this. Did we ever expect to get to this, Nath? No. No, we never expected it to be here. We just didn't expect that to happen. We thought we'd give it a crack. And here we are, 10,000 <laughs> subscribers later. Which ties in nicely to the 10,000 subscriber giveaway. We need to announce the winners. Yes. So maybe we should do that and let the guys at home know who has won the amazing prizes that we have to give away. All right, so the numbers are in. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll start off with the five prizes here, which anybody who is a subscriber was in the runnings for. Yeah. These people have been picked at random. And we'll start off with congratulations to Mike Jones. You are the winner of the ratchet and the socket set. Uh, next was Jace the Ace. I think you can have the light. <laughs> <laughs> this light is freaking great. We use it under the car all the time. Yeah. So yeah, JC Ace, you got the light. Um, next one was Brock Grimer. Got the Allen key set and the screwdriver set. Next up, we have the Ratchet Spanner. Congratulations to Lake Pipes. You are the winner of the Ratchet Spanner set. One of Nathan's favorite tools. Very useful. And lastly, we have the King Chrome Torque Wrench. That is going to Matt Kiefer. Kiefer. 
I don't know how to pronounce it, mate, but you are the winner of the King Chrome Torque Wrench. And last up, we have our toolbox. Now, to be in the runnings to win this, you had to have bought something, anything at all, from the Hack Shop Garage website. Thank you to everyone who has bought something from the Hack Shop Garage website. It goes a long way to helping support the channel and we really appreciate it. Thank you so much guys for jumping on board and buying a bunch of merch. Drum roll please. <laughs> Adam Birch, you are the winner of the big ass tool chest. <laughs> So for you guys that we just called out your name, please get in contact with us either via our Facebook, Instagram or via our email and um, yeah, we'll sort out getting these prizes out to you. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed, thank you to everyone who has bought something through the merch store and obviously a massive thank you needs to go out to Burson Garage and Burson Auto Parts for sponsoring this giveaway because if it wasn't for them and it wasn't for their support, not only would we not be here but this giveaway would not be possible. They gave us over a thousand dollars worth of tools to give away to you guys and uh, yeah, that's pretty freaking awesome. Yeah. We are absolutely stoked and very thankful for it. So that's it for 10,000 subscribers. Um, we're well past that now by the time this video has come out. Yeah, I think we're but, now at 11,000 uh, subscribers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think we're going to keep continuing doing giveaways. So keep an eye out for more giveaways. Yeah. This giveaway was brought by Burson, so if you haven't already, please head over to the Burson Garage website for tips, tricks, advice, and all that stuff. And you can get goodies like this with uh, like 25% off and stuff like that. And also, if you haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe to keep update with all the other videos and all the other cars that we're working on and what's going on in the back of the shed. And if you want to buy any merch and help support the channel, you can head over to the Hack Shop Garage website where you can buy a bunch of merch. We have had a lot of questions about when are we going to be doing another t-shirt run and another jump hoodies run. We'll, we definitely will run another pre-order for t-shirts and hoodies soon. Probably going to run a pre-order for hoodies sooner rather than later being that now we are into the winter months. Yes. And t-shirts we'll probably do again you know, whenever we can basically. Again, 10,000 subscribers, this giveaway, where we are now. This is all thanks to you guys. We could not be doing this without you. Thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you so much for commenting. Thank you for your questions that you've sent to us to answer in this video. And I hope that you've enjoyed the answers. This weekend, we'll get back into cars and <laughs> back into working on things and hopefully get the fair lane tuned soon. And we will catch you in the next episode. Chubby cheeks. <laughs> <laughs>